Okay. So we're gonna start with Ruqayya with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So okay. Ruqayya radiallahu alayhi was the oldest daughter of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is this on? Yes, we can put the clothes on the From his wife Khadija radiallahu alayhi. Yes, hey. She had been married to Utba ibn Abu Lahab ibn Ab Ab I can't say this. Yes. Ab Ab to Ab 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 Abdul Muttalib. Before okay. Abdul. So we need to learn that. Abdullah. So guys, guys, guys. So now we are studying about one of the daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do we? Do we love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Do we want to learn about his family, <coughs> his daughter? Okay, prove it to yourself. Okay, it's a priority. Okay, go to talk, put your cell phone down, and learn about his Ruqayya, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's fun. Before Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to receive the Quran. And are you able to close the door? Yeah, can you close the door? The light is when the Prophet was sent on his divine mission and Allah Allah revealed Surah Al Masih, perished. Okay, that's Surah Al Masih, okay? Hmm. Perished the two hands of Abu Lahab. Utbah's father asked him to divorce Ruqayya. So Utbah divorced her. She embraced Islam when her mother Khadija Adal, Khadija um, Rabbi Allah Okay, so when I ask you, who is the mother of Ruqayya bint Muhammad? Who is her mother? Huh? Girls, who is the mother of Ruqayya? Khadija, okay. Was Ruqayya Muslim when she was, when she was married to Udba ibn Abi Lahab? <coughs> no, she was not married yet because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't a prophet yet. You got that? So she was married to the son of Abi Lahab. And you know Surah Al Masih. Tabbat yada, ha? Abi Lahab. That was his father. So when the surah was revealed, the dad was angry. He said to his son, Divorce Ruqayya. What did he do? He divorced him. Okay? Then the Quran, the Prophet وسلم, she accepted Islam. She accepted, she, she accepted Islam and she got married to whom? So he divorced then she embraced Islam and her mother when her mother Khadija did. Radiallahu anha wa Allah. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu ah, who married her. Who married Ruqayya bin Muhammad وسلم, huh? Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan. Which Khalifa is Uthman was? What, which Khalifa was? For number one, two, three, four, five. Four. There are only four, right? So it was number? Was number? No? Three. Because number four was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, and he was killed. He was killed by the public, by the people, subhanAllah. And those people was like hypocrites who killed Umar uh, Uthman ibn Affan. And then Ali ibn Abi Talib. Okay, so Ruqayya was married to Utba ibn Abi Lahab ibn Abd al Okay, who is Abi Lahab? Who is he to the Prophet? Anybody knows Maher? Who is Utba to the Prophet Maher? His uncle. Sah, <coughs> his uncle, yes. Father. Um, I don't think I finished it. Okay, Father. And she migrated to Abyssinia twice with him. On the first immigration, she mis she miscarried the child she had from Uthman radiallahu anhu. Later, she bore him a son whom he named Abdullah. When the Prophet وسلم, immigrated to Medina, she followed suit after her husband Uthman radiallahu anhu. Okay, so she got a kid from Uthman radiallahu anhu, and what did they call him? Abdullah ibn Uthman ibn Affan. Okay? Ruqayya fell ill when the Prophet was, was preparing for the Battle of Badr. Okay, so after she migrated, she migrated to Abyssinia, which is to uh, Ethiopia, and then she migrated to Al Medina and Munawar. What happened? When they were preparing for the Battle of Badr, that was the first battle in Islam, she got very sick. What happened? Huh? So he left behind her husband, Uthman. So she left behind her husband, his, her husband of mine, to look after her. She died in Ramadan, 17th month after Prophet's immigration, while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was at Badr. Subhanallah, Allah, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant her Jannah. Subhanallah. So the Prophet lost her. She uh, died in uh, Ramadan, 17, yeah, the 17th month after the Prophet's immigration. Zaid ibn Haritha came from Badr with good news with the good news of the victory when he entered Medina. The people were were leveling the earth over her grave. Okay, so 
سو دي دولار نبوا في رقيه دي دولار من الستوري في رقيه رضي الله عنها وارضاها هو ظهر حسبا فاستفرست حسبا ها عتبة ذا سن ابراهيم عبد الله ابن ابي لهب اوكي وايد العتبه دي فورس هي بيكوز اوف واي اتفضل يا عمر وايد العتبه دي فورس رقيه رضي الله عنها وارضاها Why did Utbah divorce the daughter of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Yes, Anwar, why? Why did his, fa his father ask him to divorce her? Hmm? Because of Surah Al-Masad. Because of the Surah that Allah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does the Surah say? تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب صح now let's read the the questions yeah رقية رضي الله عنها was darb عايشة رضي الله عنها so عايشة was her mother right of true or false false صح who was her who was her mother خديجة خديجة رضي الله عنها guys anybody was looking at the telephone please put it away yes خديجة رضي الله عنها she immigrated yes تفضل she immigrated twice to Medina she immigrated twice to Medina Was it twice to Medina or was it to Abyssinia and then the other one to Medina? She was Abyssinia and then to Medina. Yes, Abyssinia and Medina, okay? The first immigration and the second immigration, yes. She died when the Prophet was at Badr. She died when the Prophet was at Badr. Huh? Yes. True or false? True. True. No, true. Yes, yes. Who was Ruqayya? Radhiallahu anhu married to first. Utbah. Huh? What's his name? Utbah. And what's his dad's name? أبو لهب عتبة بن أبو لهب وعتبة بن أبي لهب. Why did her first husband divorce her? Yeah, because of سورة المسر his dad asked him to divorce رقية رضي الله عنها. Where did رقية صلى رضي الله عنها immigrated immigrate? Where? She 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 immigrated to Abyssinia and then to Medina. The good news of the victory of Badr clashed with the sad event. What was the sad event? The death of the Prophet's daughter, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and her We're going to learn about the kindness to parents. Who is leaving? Hey. Okay. <coughs> kindness, kindness of, to parents. Okay. <coughs> What's that in Arabic? Anybody can read it in Arabic? Birru al-walidayni. Birru is kindness. Al-walidayni. Birru al-walidayni. Birru al-walidayn. That's fard in Islam. That's mandatory on you. Fard. Allah commands us to treat our parents with honor and respect. Allah says, and be good to your parents. If one or both of, if one or both of them reach old, old age in your life, do not say to them a word of disrespect, nor shout out, nor shout at them, but speak to them with gracious words. Subhanallah. That's Quran. This is Quran. This is Quran. Okay, give huh? Give thanks to me and to your parents. You see, subhanAllah, after Allah asks us to give thank you to him, who else should we, should we give thank to? Your parents. Okay? Huh? Behave with them in this worldly, wait, behave with them in this world kindly. These are orders to every Muslim towards the parents. What if my parents are tough people? You still have to follow that. Okay, do I have an excuse? If my mom is really uh, very like, uh, like she'd like to control everybody in the, in, the, in the house, okay? And I know that's not right. Can I yell at her or shout at her? Still you cannot. Still you cannot. What if I have a degree and my mom, she didn't get any education, so she interferes in my work and the stuff, talk to her in a kind way. There is no excuse that can make you yell or shout at your mom, okay? Or your dad. A man once came to the Prophet Listen to this story, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And asked his permission to take part in jihad. Okay, what's jihad? To go fight, if he's a billah, to fight in the sake of Allah, for the cause of Allah. So when you go fight, you can come back or you can die. You can be a martyr, right? What's martyr? Shaheed. So what did the Prophet say to this young man? So the young man, like a person in your age, or like after high school, he said, oh Rasulullah, give me permission to go Uh, fight with you in the battles against the disbelievers. 
What did the Prophet say? To the, yeah, huh? the Prophet, the Prophet وسلم, asked him, Are your parents still alive? Are your parents you? still alive? Like, do you have your mom and your dad with you? Yes. Huh? The man answered, Yes. Yes. The Prophet وسلم, then said, Well, then consider their service as jihad. Ah, serve them. So, serving your mom and your dad is considered as jihad, especially if you are the oldest one. And they need you in, your, in their life. So you can get the same ajr of jihad if you are working to helping your mom and your dad. Mm. If you are working to help yourself even to make the burden like less on them. Mm. Subhanallah. That's jihad? Yes, that's jihad. What about if I make my mom go to, to go to bed every night and she is crying because of me? Allah, may Allah forgive you. It's so difficult. I don't know what to do. What If somebody is asking this, what to do? I don't know, Allah. But you are violating all the rules of Islam. Yeah, hmm. So you got this hadith, you got this, you got this hadith, okay? So to be dutiful to your parents is equal to jihad. You got that? Hmm. Um, okay, so the nature of honor and respect for our parents is such that it requires many things, including the following. That we keep them away, that we keep them out of harm's way. That we treat them with kindness. That we do not get irritated with We're going to read one by one yeah, and pause a little bit. Let people like reflect on each one. So that we keep them out of harm's way. Like if your dad can't drive and you can drive, you give him a ride. If your mom doesn't drive you very well or she is tired, okay? Or her eyesight is not that strong, you offer to drive her to give her a ride. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if they don't know how to cook, or if your mom is like, yeah, she, she her hand is shake or something, help her. Don't wait till something happens to her. Okay? Number two. That we treat them with kindness. Of course, that's everybody of us do that, inshallah ta'ala. Huh? That we do not get irritated with them or with their needs. You know what's irritated? Don't get mad quickly with your mom and dad. Mm. Don't say, oh, have patience when they talk to you. Mm. Don't interrupt them. Number four. That we regard service to them as an act of worship. Ah. If I wash the dishes for my mom, that's an act of worship? Yes. Because you save her energy, her effort. If you make up make up your bed, if you make your bed in the morning, okay? Saving your mom with energy to fold the blankets and to put the bill, do that for yourself. And you do it and know that Allah is going to give you ajr for that. When you find that there are so many things on the floor, sweep the floor for your mom. Don't say, I don't care. I'm not a woman. It's not my job. No. A Muslim doesn't say that. It's not my job. <coughs> Anything you do, Allah says, Whatever the small thing you do for your parents, and you know you do that because you are a Muslim, Allah is going to reward you. Father. That we pray to Allah to forgive them and have mercy on them. Every time you are praying, when you are sujood, say, Oh Allah, forgive my parents and have mercy on my parents. Forgive my parents and have mercy. Make dua for them. That's, that's how to be kind to them according to Islam. Number six. Number six huh? That we do not raise our voice above, above theirs. Ah, I know some people, they do. Haram. Haram and the Prophet also, I, I'm not sure if it's the Prophet, no, I heard it. I'm not going to say the Prophet until I make sure. So the way you treat your parents, the same way your kids are going to treat you. Mm -hmm. sure. But what if my grandparents were good people, okay? And they brought my mom and the dad well. But I am, I am naughty. I am not very respectable to my parents. I will say your parents didn't know how to, how to bring you up well. That's their fault. They showed you all the, all the love, so you take advantage of the love. Okay, you got spoiled. Halas? Yeah, number seven. That we do not go against their wishes, their wishes as, long as, as long as this does not entail any violation of Allah's commands. Yes, don't go against their wishes. But what about if their wishes are against my wishes? Like, like, for example, uh, 
would like, I'd like you to get married. And usually parents interfere in that, right? P parents like I would like you to know. So if you have the sound mind, the sound mentality, you can differentiate between people very well. You know, like, oh, these are good people, these are bad people. This person is a good person, but his family are not that good religious in religion. Okay? Your parents know more than you do. So you tell your parents, okay, you, you object to this person or this girl or the, this family, okay? Uh, can we ask? Can we try to make sure of what you said? Maybe it's an impression only, okay? And the prophet asked us to do that. For marriage, especially for marriage, you have to try to find somebody who have deen, akhlaq, adab, because that's where you are gonna make your kids, your kids are gonna grow up by this lady, or you are gonna, your kids are gonna be brought up by this man. So you have to be very careful, okay? So your wish and their wishes, Try to favor their wishes over yours, okay? Unless it's marriage, so you ask and you be quiet and you listen, okay? Don't just argue for argument, okay? Don't be biased to your opinion. Be objective, okay? Okay with that, okay, ma'am. Let's, let's try to ask more about the people. Let's get some more like evidence that they are good or they are not, okay? Twa. If our temper should even flare up in anger towards them, we must remember how they brought us up how they spent many sleepless nights doing so, how they cared for us and wore themselves out. We must also remember the words of Allah. Speak speak to them in gracious words. Yeah. So gracious words. What's gracious words? What's gracious words? Hmm? Yeah. Nice. Nice words. That's an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They went, they, went hungry, they went hungry themselves to keep us satisfied. They stayed awake at night so we could enjoy our sleep. Of course, it cost them to obey. But young people should not think that they are the only ones in this world who should obey. Everyone, every one of us has to obey. Working people obey their employees. Teachers obey school authorities. Soldiers obey commanding officers. Young people should, ab young people should above all keep clear, clearly in mind that Allah's commands Allah commands them to love, respect, and obey their parents. Yeah, sometimes you listen to the teacher, or you listen to the principal, or you listen to an officer, and you don't listen to your dad or your mom. How come? Allah orders you to listen to your mom and dad and talk to them nicely. So you talk nicely to a policeman because he has authority. What about your parents? <coughs> their authority is related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they are mad at you, Allah is going to punish you. If the policeman is mad at you, he's going to put you in jail, okay? But Allah is not going to punish you, okay? I mean, it's not related to the deen, okay? But you have to be respectful to everybody. You have to reflect the akhlaq of Islam. If you have the deen inside your heart, you, you act nicely with everyone, okay? Because you're, you're, you represent a Muslim, okay? Go on. So we should love them for so we should love them from our hearts. We should always try to we should always try hard to make them happy. We must show them our love and satisfy their needs. We should look after them if they are sick and, and whenever they need our help. Subhanallah. Read that again, please. So we should love them from our hearts. We should always try hard to make them happy. We must show them our love and satisfy their needs. We should always look after them if they're if they are sick and whenever they need our help. Yeah, so if there is food in the house and your mom loves it and she saved it for you you can you can have some of the food and mom i am full now you can eat this one that's like i care about my mom okay oh my mom is at work and she's gonna be she's gonna come hungry okay and we ran out of the food try to cook her something try to find her something before she come home and find nothing so as long as they care for you you care for them as well okay you agree with me that's how, that's, that's how we go to Jannah. If you don't do this stuff, Jannah is going to be far away from you. Every little piece of knowledge we learn here, it's a step towards Jannah, mm -hmm. if you apply it in, in your life, in daily life. Khalas? Fine. Parents receive authority over their children from Allah. Ah, who gives them the authority? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So children must obey them in all things, with the exception of of a sin, of, of a command to a sin. Yeah, if you're that, say, don't pray now. That's how come. And they will never ask you to do that, not, not to pray now, right? 
Mm -hmm. Usually say three or five. Yes. If you told your mother you would be back home at uh, say 5 o'clock p.m., be home at that time. If you offer to clean the garden for your father, do the job and keep working until you finish it. And you know what? If you don't, if you say I'm going to come at 5 o'clock and you go there at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., you are a hypocrite. Mm. Because you promised and you, break, you broke your promise. Because you, you thought you told the lie and you... you, you you thought you were telling me the truth and you told the lie. So try to be very punctual and listen to me, yes. A man once came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Listen to this story, Allah, it's a beautiful one, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And said, oh Allah's messenger, who is more entitled to my best companionship? Yes, man ahaqqu al-nasa bi husni sahabati. You know, the, he said your mom, your mom. How many times he said your mom? Three. So that's the hadith, yes. Huh? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said your mother, the man then asked who's next. He answered your mother. The man further asked, who is next? He answered your mother. The man then asked, who is next? He answered your father. You get that? That's Sahih al-Bukhah. Yes. The Prophet wasallam said that Allah has forbidden us from disobeying our parents. He also said that disobeying our parents is one of the major sins. Ah, oh, major sins in Al-Kabair, yes. You know what does the major sins do? Take you to hellfire directly. Subhanallah. Major sins if you don't, yes, if you don't obey and listen to your parents, it, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's called the Uquq al Walidayn. Uquq al Walidayn is from Al Kabah. Oh, when your dad say pray your mom. You are not, Allah is not going to ask you for me. Don't ask me to pray. Don't ask me to study. Don't, haram. If you talk this way with your parents, haram. Allah is going to put you in hell fire because of that. You have to learn how to have adab and akhlaq when you talk to your parents. Yalla, the exercise. Mm. Are we, these sentences true or false? Mm. We do, we do not, we do not have to treat our parents well. Do you think that's correct? No, that's false. Huh? Disobeying our parents is a major sin. Is it a major sin? Yeah. True. Yeah. Young people are the only ones who should obey their parents. If you are young, should only. obey others. Yeah. No, no, everybody else. Yes. The old and young, answer this question. Huh? What does the Quran command us to do regarding our parents? To obey them, huh? to talk to them nicely, to speak to them gracious words, right? Mm -hmm. That's it, okay? Yes, huh? List at least four things we should do to honor our parents. Four things that you should do to honor your parents. Huh? To pray for them, ask Allah forgiveness and mercy on them. That's one. You guys say the other three. Huh? You remember the list we did? The list, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Huh? What else? So anything you do for them is considered as a worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Sweeping the floor, washing the dishes, doing that, like washing the clothes, and everything you do, peace be Allah, for the sake of Allah and to obey your parents. What else? Huh? You don't get mad at them. Don't don't raise your voice over them, right? Speak to them gracious words, right? Jazakumullah khairan. Yes. What are some things, What are some of the hardships our parents went through while bringing us up? When they were bringing you up, when you were a baby, or even before that, what are the hardships they went through? Sleepless nights. Sleepless nights, huh? You know, you you are here when your mom carry you nine months, right? Mm -hmm. That's not easy. And the delivery, it's, 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 it's very painful, okay? And then they try to be awake till you sleep, right? And prepare food for you. Well, not a lot, mashallah, yeah. Think up, huh? When should you obey your parents? Give two examples. When should you obey your, your parents? Give two examples, huh? When they ask you to do something you don't like, but it's not haram. Like, who likes to wash like a, like after like a, a, an invitation when you have all the people in your house, right? Imagine you have like 15 or 20 people eating, صح? so you have lots of dishes that need to be washed, right? Okay, I am so tired, uh, Saida, for example, you have to wash, I cooked all the food. So I know that's too much, I'm not gonna do it, right? So, you, ob you obey your parents, okay? You obey your parents with the things that are hard on you. You understand me? The thing is that you don't like, you wish you can say no. But I'm gonna do it for the sake of, of my parents and for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. But if your mom say, oh, do you like to uh, watch a cartoon? Yeah, okay, have spent this hour watching the cartoon film. Oh, I'm obeying you, mom. That's not obedience. 
You are doing the things that you love. Obedience is the thing that you dislike. Do you understand me? Did you, did you get that? Oh, I'm so tired, I'm going to go to bed now. And she said, read Surah Tabarak, read Surah Al-Mulk now. I'm so tired, I can't. No, okay, okay, well, I will read it. And sit down and read it, okay? Fine. Why do you think mothers deserve more love and respect than the fathers? What is, why do you think that, guys? Huh? You answer me. Why do you think mothers deserve more love and respect than your fathers? Huh? Hmm? Uh, what do you think? Why? Girls, you should answer this question. Why do you think mothers deserve more love and respect than parents? Yeah, than dad. Yeah, they look after the kids more than the parents, the dad do, right? They, they breastfeed them, right? They clean them, they wash them, they wash their clothes. A lot of things, Allah Azim. They prepare the food, they wash that, they clean, they sweep. Wallah al I think, uh, Wallah subhanAllah, you know only if the woman is very close to Allah, because shaitan is very close to women, by the way. Shaitan, listen, shaitan whispers easily to women, and women, it's easy for them to obey shaitan. Listen, guys, you are doing a great job. Be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Resist your desires. Resist your, like, you know, the whispering in your ears. Because, yeah, subhanAllah, there is a hadith. And the hadith said, the majority of the people in hellfire are from women. Do you know that? Not only gossiping, it's easy to obey, the, to be biased. Women are easy to be biased to their opinion, okay, to, the, to, the, to her family, uh, to, you know, if she knows that's truth, but I am mad. Like women don't control their anger very well sometimes, okay? And some other reasons. Fine. Now, that's another chapter. Al-Qur'anu Kalamullah. Can you say that together, huh? Al-Qur'anu Kalamullah. What was the first chapter we did? What was the, what was the name? Ruqayyah bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we did what? Birr al-Walidayn. Okay? And the third one is what? Al-Qur'anu Kalamullah. Are you tired? Oh, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> the Quran is the word of Allah. It is his book. It is the revelation. Which angel Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salam brought down from Almighty Allah to his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huh? The Prophet, peace be upon him, delivered it as received, as he received it in his community. Okay, so is there any word that's difficult to hear? What is Quran? What is Quran? Kalam Allah in Arabic. Al Quran Kalam Allah. Kitab Allah. At Tanzil. The revelation is called At Tanzil. Al Wahya. Okay? Which the angel Jibreel brought down from Almighty Allah and out his messenger. Yes, the Quran. The Quran is uncreated. It has not been invented. Oh, is Quran created, guys? Is the Quran created? No, it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So Al Quran is the word of Allah. Okay? You get that? And in the Quran, there is the word B in Surah Yaseen. Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an an yakula lahu kun fayakun. So the word kun is a word with it Allah creates things. And it's a word from the Quran. So how come a created thing creates other? If the Quran is created, how come a created? So the Quran is not created. You get that? Kalamullah. Mm -hmm. Al-Quran, Kalamullah, yes. It has not been invented, changed, fabricated, or abridged. It does not contain anything that is re redundant. Okay, but if you read uh, or if you watch YouTube from the people who are jealous or hasid of Islam, people who are haqib to Islam, they try, oh, the Quran has contradiction. And they don't speak Arabic. They don't even know the Arabic language. They didn't study it. Even they know the Arabic language, they didn't study Nah. So because of their lack of understanding, they assume there are contradictions in the Quran. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this Quran is perfect. Okay? No contradiction, no abridges, not fabricated, and not invented. Okay? Not edited. Nobody can edit the Quran. The Quran is as it is. Okay? Fine. 
Allah has taken upon himself to protect it against corruption and no falsehood can approach it from, be from before or behind it. Allah says, verily we have sent the reminder, the Quran, and we will surely protect it against corruption. Yeah, but Allah didn't say that about the Injil, the Bible or the Torah, okay? So they were falsified, okay? But the Quran, Allah kept it. Why? There is no other messenger that Allah is going to send. The Prophet was the seal, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet and Messenger. Yes. Verily it, is on, verily, it is an honorable, well-fortified book of exalted power. No, false, no falsehood can approach it from before or after. Yes. It is sent down by the all-wise, worthy of all praise. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Look, this is Allah describing in the Quran. It is an honorable, honorable book. Well fortified book of exalted power by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. No falsehood can approach this book from before or after it. It is sent down by the All Wise, Al Hakim, worthy of all praise, Al Aziz Al Hakim. Father. The best among Muslims are those who learn it and teach it to others. Whoever recites it will be greatly rewarded for doing so. The Prophet ﷺ describes the person who has nothing of it, who has nothing of it in his heart as a ruined, deserted house. Hold on. Now let's have a look and pause here. So if if some people, if some Muslims or so so called Muslims, okay, they don't know even one ayah of the Quran. Just as they know Alhamdu sometimes, and not very good. What did the Prophet say about them? Huh? How did the Prophet describe the people who have never memorized in the thing of the Quran? As a ruined, deserted house. As deserted. You know, you know who lives in the deserted house? Mm -hmm. Jinn, devils. Devils live there. <coughs> you know the deserted house? It has cracks. <coughs> it has spiders. Oh. It has all the scary things. So a deserted house. Who, who would like? to live in a deserted house. It's a scale. It doesn't have any happiness. No life, okay? So if your heart is empty, it doesn't have Quran, your heart has li is lifeless. And it's a scale. And it's inhibited by jinn, devils. It will never, you will never feel anything. Oh, I committed a sin. You will never say that to me because you don't know what's a sin. Subhanallah. Yes. The Prophet وسلم, said, whoever recites a letter from the book of Allah will receive one reward. And so a letter, one letter. Like, you know, if, if you are learning how to read the Quran and you say, you get three, three rewards because of that sin mean. And you couldn't say, Bismillah, just, Bismillah. You get double ajr. Allah says, Quran because you are trying to learn, okay? And it's difficult, and you are stuttering. For the stuttering, the person with the Quran, he gets the double ajr, the Arab one, or the person who can read it. Because it's difficult, but you insist on saying it. You love to read it, okay? Father. And one reward comes with, with and one reward comes with 10 like it. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala double, yeah, like, like multiplies them. I do not say that, wait a second. I do not say that the, the Alif. letters Alif, Lam, and Mim are one letter, but rather Alif is one letter, Lam is one, Lam is a letter, and Mim is a letter. Yeah, like the Surah Al-Baqarah, it starts with Alif, Lam, Mim. These are three letters, okay? But they form like one word. Like you look at them, it's like, it's like a, one word. So does Allah is gonna reward? No, Alif, Lam, Mim. So these are three letters, okay? So Alif, Harf, the Quran meets five demands from every Muslim. They are as no, we need to read this one. one. <laughs> yeah. okay. The Quran writes upon Muslims. The Quran, what are the rights of Quran upon you? Some people don't know that. Okay. Huh? The Quran meets five demands from every Muslim. They are as follows. Listen, guys, you have to memorize them. A Muslim is required to believe in the Quran. You have to believe in the Quran. Alhamdulillah, we do. Yeah. He is required to read it. We are required, Alhamdulillah, we do. صح? Say Alhamdulillah if you read the Quran. Say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Some people didn't say it. <laughs> yeah, huh? He is required to understand it. Ah, so translation 
It's, it's, a, it's something that one of the rights of the Quran that you understand it. How can you understand it if you don't speak Arabic? So many people in your age, they speak Arabic, they can't understand the Quran, guys. Don't, don't assume that any Arabic person is going to read the Quran, they understand. No, unless they read the tafsir and they read the meaning, okay, and simplify the words, they can't understand every, every word in the Quran. Yeah, it's modern standard the Arabic. Yeah. People don't speak modern standard Arabic. That's why it's not it's not easy for anybody. Oh, he's Arab, he's, he's Arabic. They see it. You lived in Egypt. Do you think everyone who's gonna read in Ayah can understand it? Yeah. No. And they see it's from Yemen, the same, so no. No, it's not easy. Okay? You have to read the tafsir, the interpretation of the Quran, and 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 you study it. So is it okay just to read the Quran without the meaning? You are still asking, you are still asking to understand the meaning. That's one of the rights of the Quran. Number four. He is required to act upon its teachings. Ah, like employ it in your life. What does the Quran say? Wala zina. Don't approach adultery, fornication. Be away from that. La taqrabu, don't, don't come closer to it. La you, apply, you apply it in your life. Okay? وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَىٰ Don't make the make, don't put the make up and go outside. Allah is asking not to do that for girls. That's order from the Qur'an. I can't recall it fast now. وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَىٰ The make up and eyelash and all this stuff. No, that's haram. You do that if you are attending a wedding and you are all girls together, no problem. Okay? You are with your like friends and you are all girls and you are just like, it. you can dress like a, what you like. You are women together. But to go outside into the public with this like decorations or this like a tabarruj, that's haram. Haram. Okay? Fun. He is required to convey his teachings to others. Ah, and especially here. Especially here in America. He is required to convey its teaching to others. Spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Spread the values in the Quran and imply them. When the Quran says, don't lie, don't tell lies. When the Quran asks you not to be among those who are hypocrites, so don't break your promises. Be in time or on time. Don't go late or like earlier. Don't betray people who entrusted you. Don't take advantage of anything. Don't take anything that you don't need or you don't use because you are greedy. Allah doesn't like people who are greedy. People who are very selfish. People who are very stingy. People who cheat. People who deceive the other. People who look upon other. People who are racist. All these are stuff they are in the Quran. Employ them in your daily life. Fun. The recitation of the Quran nourishes the heart. Ah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So the heart without the Quran, it is kharib. You say kharban, kharib. It's deserted. But the Quran nourishes. You know the word nourishes? Feeds the heart. So try to read the Quran every day. Try to read even half a page every day. Wallah al the day you don't read it, it's like I lost something very precious. Something bad happened to me. I did the read Quran today. When you start, you will not taste the, the sweetness of Quran until you continue for two months, three months, reading half a page every day, half a page every day. Fun. Those who lived during the times of the Prophet وسلم, received their inspiration and training from the Quran. The Quran was their guide. It was their light and their leader. It was their constant companion. Allahu Akbar, constant companion. Who's your best friend? The Quran. Yeah, my best friend is the Quran. The best thing, I put my earbuds on my head, I'm listening to the Quran three hours a day. Mashallah. I finish the Quran every month listening by putting the earbuds or the headphones on my head. Not songs. Not listening to songs. Allahu Akbar.
الله ما شاء الله سو ميني الحا والحافظ سو ميني سو ميني إن وان كلاس حافظ حافظ ما شاء الله but they they put a lot of effort in that high school students you should listen to the Quran more than you do use the cell phone you pay the money or your parents pay the money to give you something to facilitate your life okay to make your life easy use it to take you to Jannah so you pay the money and something so it's expensive use that expensive thing to take you to Jannah closer to Jannah don't use the piece of metal here inside your hand to take you to hellfire so you pay money and subhanallah it takes you to hellfire you pay money and it makes you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah the Quran is full of wisdom. We should spend hours understanding the Quran. If we really want to benefit from the Quran, we should listen to it and study it as if, as if it is being revealed to, to so us today. So listen, study. Listen, study. So you listen to it in Arabic so many times, alhamdulillah. Now you need to know the meaning. So listen to it in English or in Somali. Listen to the translation, the tafsir. And after listen to it, okay, what was the occasion of the revelation of this ayah? Who was the Sahabi that this ayah was revealed about? Now you study more and more and you go, you dive deep, deep, deep. So you get the wisdom of the Quran. Okay, fine. After understanding what we read in the Quran, we should act upon its teachings. Of course, you should act upon teaching like imply them in your daily exercise. Fill in the blanks with the suitable words. Blank? What brought down the Quran to the Prophet ﷺ? Who? Jibreel alayhi salam. Okay, or Al Wahya. So Jibreel has another name. What is the name? Al Wahya. Okay. The Quran is the space of Allah. It's the word of Allah. MashaAllah. Fatahallah wa kalam Allah. Allah has protected the Quran from corruption. From what? Falsification. From a changing, right? So la yatihi al baqir. Yes. The best among the Muslims are those who learn the Quran and teach it to teaches it to them. Allahu Akbar, MashaAllah. The best among us, the best people here, MashaAllah, when you grow up, but even from now, you learn the Quran and te you teach it. Boom. Answer the following question. What are the rights of the Quran on Muslim? Huh? What are the rights of the Quran on you? To understand the meaning, huh? read it, recite it, right? Memorize it. Hmm. What else? Act upon it. You apply it in your daily life. Okay. Again, read it, listen to it. Okay, study it, understand the meaning of it. Okay, uh, apply it in your daily life. Khalas, these are the rights of the Quran. From the life of the Prophet ﷺ and the companion, what should the position of the Qur'an in our lives be? Like the religious, like your friend. No, like the, the best companion. We should have the, the, the Qur'an as our friend. Mm -hmm. In your cell phone, you have, mashallah, the app most of the time. You know, oh, now I am on page like uh, uh, 333. Alhamdulillah, I finished the Baqarah. Oh, this month, I'm reading Al Imran. Inshallah, when I finish Al Imran, I'm going to read Al Nisa. When I finish the Nisa, I'm going to read the Ma'ida. After the Ma'ida, and you know which surah comes after, which surah comes before. This means you care about the Quran. Okay, you try, you do your best. I forget, you do your best. Okay? Write a brief note of the Quran. I love the Quran. The Quran makes my, brings life into my heart. The heart that does not have Quran is like a deserted house, right? So we can write about the Quran, right? The best among us are those who learn the Quran and teaches it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our hearts full of Quran. Amen. This is chapter. So what was the first chapter we read? Who, whom we read about? Huh? Ruqayya bint Muhammad. Who was her first husband? Ud oh, you can say Abi Lahab bin Abi Lahab's son, okay? Okay, Udba bin Abi Lahab. Why did he divorce her? Because of Surat al nasr was she Muslim at that time? No. no. Was her husband Muslim? No. no. After he divorced her, who married her? Uthman ibn Affan, the third Khalifa, right? She got a son from Uthman. What was his name? 
Abdullah, right? And the sheep passed away during what? Ramadan. Ramadan, which was the battle of Badr, right? Jazakumullah. And after that, what was the second thing we read about? Huh? Birrul Walidain, yes. To be kind to your parents. How did Rukhaya die? She was sick. Yes, yes. Okay? And after Birrul Walidain, what did we learn about? Huh? Guys, what's after being like kindness of your parents? What was the third chapter? The Quran. Okay? Can you repeat them again? Say them to yourselves. We learn about Ruqayya bint Muhammad. Okay? We learn about how to be kind to your parents. Okay? And the kindness of parents. And it's mandatory on you. And it's from the Kaba'a, the major sins, if you are not obedient to your parents. And the third one was what? The Quran, Kalamullah. What are the rights of the Quran? Okay? Who are the people among uh, the, who are the best people among us? Those who learn the Quran and the Quran. Subhanallah, what is that? Fingerprints? The unique creation of Allah, yes. Because Allah mentioned it. Bala qadirina ala an nusawiya banana. Subhanallah. Allah speaks about the fingerprints because He created us with that. It's unique. Can you find two people with the same fingerprints? No. And that's um, that's a mu'jiza as well. Mu'jiza. Uh, what time is it now? Because Aisha is at... Uh... It's 6.04. Okay, so we can read it, right? Let's do it. Okay. Guys, pay attention, please. We'll go fast, inshallah, these days. Yes. Huh? Father. There are more than 6 billion people in the world. Nowadays, I think more than that, right? Yeah. Yes, because this book is old. Huh? Some are tall, some are short, some are fat, some are thin, some have black hair, some have some have fair hair, some are dark skin, some are fair skin. Each person is unique with his or own physical with, with his or own physical. Who did that? Who did that? Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. Many different subjects are mentioned in the Quran. In the courses mm. in the courses of inviting people to believe. Sometimes the Quran mentions the heavens, sometimes the animals, sometimes the trees and Allah Hmm. It also mentions many other things as evidence of Allah's greatness and wisdom. The Quran calls us in many verses to reflect on our own creation and, and on anything Allah has created. Do you get as if you if you just think, oh subhanallah, Allah created people whose hair are black, some people are blonde, subhanallah. You get azra for that. If you keep thinking about the people, you get azra for that. If you look at the sky, subhanallah, how high is the sky? Look at the stars, it's beautiful. You get azra for that. Okay? Oh, how many languages do people speak? Subhanallah. Allah created all that. You get ajr for that. Yes. Mm. The creation of man and the, and the miraculous aspects of this creation are stressed in many verses of the Quran. Some bits of information within these verses are so wonderful and detailed that it is impossible for a person living in the 7th century to have known them. Hence it, is, hence, it follows that the Quran is the word, is the word of Allah. It is, sent down, it is sent down by the creator of man. For men's own guidance. guidance. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. Let, let us figure out the uniqueness of the fingerprints. The Quran says, Does men think we will not assemble his bones? Yes, we are able to even. This is the ayah. Bala ala an banana. Yes. We are able to even put together in perfect order the very tips of his fingers. SubhanAllah. Hmm. One feature that distinguishes you from everyone else is the pattern of the curved lines on the tips of your fingers. These patterns are different in every person, and no two people have the same fingerprint. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. When you read something that SubhanAllah Azim, it's a great thing to say SubhanAllah, get ajr for that. So SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, yes. Hmm. The patterns of your fingerprints do not change as you grow older, even if your skin becomes cracked and wrinkled with age. SubhanAllah, so you... SubhanAllah. That's the thing like SubhanAllah, how did Allah subhanahu do that? SubhanAllah, yes. So your fingerprints can be used to identify you wherever you go. You tend to leave your fingerprints behind. This is why your fingerprints are widely accepted as very important ways to identify people. The fingerprints are unique to its owner. Every person has a different set of fingerprints. All, all the people who have lived throughout history also had different fingerprints. Can fingerprints form by coincidence? Yeah, can fingerprints form by coincidence? No, it's by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not coincidence. Okay, we don't have coincidence, yes. Huh? It is interesting to know that two centuries ago, fingerprints were not important. It was only in the late 19th century that fingerprints were discovered to be different from one another. In the 7th century, the Quran pointed out that the fingerprints of human beings bear a unique characteristic. SubhanAllah, people discovered that when? 
in the 19th century, okay? But the Quran, subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, subhanallah, the Quran spoke about that very clearly, yes. Does man think we will not assemble his bones? Yes, we are able to even put together in perfect order the very tips of his finger. You know what are the very tips of your finger? The fingerprints. Huh? What does this show? This clearly shows that the Quran is the words of Allah. Every bit of information and description of the Quran is true because every verse of it, every syllable of it, every part, part, particle of it is from Almighty Allah. Allah. It shows that Allah is great and wise and creates everything in the best of forms and shapes. Allahu Akbar exercise. Okay, guys, are you, can, are you ready to answer the questions? Inshallah. Was that going too fast or was that good? No, Alhamdulillah, that's great, by the way. Awesome. Yeah, we come late, like we start at five or something, and Alhamdulillah, we do a lot, okay? Because the vocabulary is not that difficult. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Is the vocabulary difficult again? Yes? Okay. So, uh, what, what answers, yes? Oh, what answers does the Quran give to those who think it is impossible to be raised after death? What answer does the Quran give us to those who think it's impossible uh, to be raised after death? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, makes the tips of your fingers perfect back again. You know after death, listen, after death, all the skin and the cells are decayed, right? There's nothing left except for a piece of bone in the very back of your spinal cord, okay? SubhanAllah, it's called the ajm zanab. This never, never decays. A very little tiny piece of uh, bones, okay? SubhanAllah. So Allah is gonna create you back from that. Mm. SubhanAllah, Allah. Yeah. Allah said that, okay? And what about the people who get burned? Nothing is stayed as well. Allah created them from nothing. Is it difficult for him to create them back? As No, SubhanAllah, it's easy for them. It's a word, Allah just say, be, kun, okay. and the thing becomes, yes, pardon. Do fingerprints change as we get older? Do your fingerprints change when you go old, grow older? Huh? No, of course not, yeah. When did men discover fingerprints and when did the Quran mention them? 19th century, men discovered it. The Quran spoke about that in the 7th century, okay? 7th century, okay. What do the wonder, what do the wonderful designs of the fingerprints point to? Point to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are unique, right? Everybody has a special different pattern of fingerprints than the other. Okay. Activity, yeah. Apply watercolor to your fingers and mark oh wait, sorry. Apply watercolor to fingers and mark paint. Can you read this? Sorry. Mark prints on paper. Now compare your prints with those of your friends. Are they of course we know that they are not gonna be, but did have you ever looked at fingerprints, try to compare them? Have you ever tried to do that? Try to do it and get a magnifying glass and look, subhanAllah, Allah, it's amazing. Even use your cell phone, the magnifier in your cell phone, and try to uh, like, uh, look at your fingerprints and go with every curve, subhanAllah, they are beautiful when you make them very big. Hmm. That's also an activity, halas? Adabu libas. What is that? Islamic dress code? There is an Islamic dress code? Of course. Adabu libas. What's it called again? Say it, huh? Adabu libas. What's adab? The code. Adab, the code of morals, the code of behavior, the code of conduct. It's called adab. But I think in Somali, when you say adab, it's a bad word, right? Or the person is misbehaving. Adab. It's like you don't, you don't do adab, right? Okay. Can we read it before Aisha? Or? I think we can. The six alone. We have to work. Yeah. How many? Let's see how many pages. One, two, three, three and a half. It's like it's like stop here. Hmm? Can we do that or guys? What do you think, boys? Yeah. Do it or huh? Do it. Young man. There are three types of clothes. Three types of clothes only. We have so many. Huh? Those which Allah has declared unlawful for everyone. Listen, unlawful for everyone. For boys and girls, it's unlawful, okay? And then? Those which he has declared unlawful for certain individuals, but not for others. And, and those for which he has disapproved. Disapproved, again. So there are unlawful, okay? Unlawful to for certain individual and huh? disapproved. Yeah. Again, can we say them, huh? Unlawful for everyone, huh? Unlawful for certain individuals and 
those that he this approves the clothes what are they huh? the first type of clothes that have been declared unlawful for everyone are those that are wrongfully obtained by such access such access as can you wear a stolen jacket haram can you wear a stolen hat haram a stolen pair of glasses haram a stolen shoes what is deqa a stolen shoe haram okay haram you can yeah. Huh? An example of those which have been declared unlawful for certain individuals and not for others is silk. Silk is permissible listen, for women. Listen, what is that? Hold on. No, no, guys, listen, I know. Because they can look at her shoes here, but we found this the next time. An example of those which have been declared unlawful for certain individuals, silk. What is silk? You know silk? Yeah. Silk is a very soft thing. It is permissible for women, haram for men. <coughs> if you have a t-shirt that is very soft, made of silk, can you put it in your skin? Yeah. You're gonna put in fire in your skin, yeah. 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 Well, that is haram. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there are so many clothes made of silk. For those who like to look like women. Some, yes, yeah, some, Hamis? No, I said no, but no country. You can. No, I, I don't think so. I have never. He's asking, is there like a man, Hamis made of silk? Who's gonna make it? They know it's haram. Unless this country is cat. Okay? You get it from a careful country. Is that, is that silk? No, it's not silk candy. No, that's not silk. No, no, that's not silk. Okay, uh, you know what silk, where does silk come from? It comes from worm. You know the worm? The caterpillar? No caterpillar? Yeah. The worm, yeah. Father, yeah. Those that are disapproved are those going to accept. Okay, a question. That's very important, huh? The jewelers, uh, no, so. No, like, like, the jewelry that makes like noise and rocking, are going back. So, yeah, for walking, yes. Uh, listen, guys. So, everything in Islam is to protect the privacy, okay? And if you are doing that to show off, Islam would not show off, okay? You have to look look nice, to look clean, okay? Have decent clothes, but don't like brag or don't be boast about what you have and other people don't. So, if the lady is showing her earring is the big one made of gold, and I can't pay my rent. <coughs> I'll feel hassled towards this thing. I can't pay my rent, or I can't pay the car like bills. And she is putting like, and some like, uh, you know what you call that here? Yeah, huh? Yeah, dahab, what do you call it, dahab? Bristles? Yeah, the, the dahab in her hand. Don't show that here. I'll, Okay, this question. What if you got something? Listen, guys. You wore it, but it was stolen, but you didn't know. But you knew after. When you know, you stop. You you you, get, you take it out and you try to give it back to the people who own it. Okay. If whatever it is. Okay. What the name here? Those that are disapproved are those going to extra extravagant lengths to a point where they amount to boastfulness and arrogant pride. Ah, anything is that make you like bo you know boasting, like showing off. Okay. Praising myself. I have the, this is the most expensive pair of shoes. Haram. What you are doing is haram. This pair of shoes is $400. Why? Why you buy a pair of shoes for $400, right? Yeah, People get it from Walmart to for $30 maximum, maybe, or $50. Mm -hmm. So you have to be average. Don't, you are going to be wasteful. And Allah says, إن المبذرين كانوا إخوات إخوان الشياطين. Those who are very wasteful are followers of shaitan. So when you buy something, be average, be moderate, okay? Don't go to the, the most expensive. No, 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 no. We don't do that as Muslims, okay? Like some people buy a suit, a man buys a suit for five thousand dollars. Yes, haram, yeah. Five thousand dollars for a suit. Why? Why? No, more than that. For one day? Father, yes. Matter Silk is permissible for women. Huh? Go on. Matters of dress have two sides. One of them is related to the rights of Allah, and while the second one is related to the rights of men. So listen to the, to the dress. So your clothes, okay, have two sides. What are the two sides? One of them is related to the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, the second is related to the right of man. 
Go on. As for the side relating to the rights of Allah, it is the concealing of the private parts aura ah. from the eyes of the people. So how come I buy? I'm gonna talk about the boys and girls. How come I buy? I buy a pair of pants that are torn over my side. They are Subhanallah. I pay money to buy pants and they show part of my thigh. Haram, Allah. Allah has in those those pieces of the skin that are exposed to everybody's eyesight. Wallah, he is will be in hellfire. That's it. So it's no discussion for that. Anything you show from the private, from the aura, for women or men, hellfire deserves it. Hellfire is going to deal with that. Allah said it. Illa aura. A very, a very strong, like warning against. Don't never show off your aura. Okay. Yes. As for the side of. No aura for men. Okay. What's aura for men? Under the knee, like above the knee is aura. You know, I'm talking about the men. Women, all the women is our except for her face and, and uh, hands. Okay? And you know that. That's why, mashallah, in your hijab. For men, what if a person is playing a soccer and his shorts is 10 or 5 inches above his knee? Haram. But he prays, still haram. He is very righteous. If he is very righteous, he would get like a longer shorts. You have to get a pair, a longer uh, Or you can wear pants and then the shorts above them. So many people do that, right? Yeah, father, yes. As for the side pertaining to the rights of rights of humans, it is that which provides protection from the heat, the cold, and all kinds of things that can be harmful. And to look nice. Also, you have the right to look nice, okay? Yeah, Allah jamil and yuhibbu al jamal. It is not the rights of men to imitate women's style of dress. Ha, ha, ha. Like this hadith, no, hold on, this hadith. Allah, the Prophet sallallahu say, those who imitate women are accursed. Those who try to imitate women in their clothes are accursed. And those who like to imitate men and to walk like a man or behave like a man for women, why? Because it's like we object the creation of Allah. It's like those who do the transgender, but that's, the, that's like the crossing the borders. Allah created you a man, so behave and act according to Allah, and Allah created you a woman. Do that and be proud that Allah created you a woman. Because there are so many things that you get as for men don't. You saw the Prophet Hazis, he said, your mom, your mom, your mom, three times and then your dad, right? Be proud of that. Men Sorry. can't wear necklaces, right? Or like rings? So the necklace, <laughs> yes. So Allah has a lot of like... I've seen a lot of men, chains, even Muslim men wear Chains, yeah, chains yeah. made of gold or something. Gold is haram, it's haram even. You can't, you can't, you can't, I don't know why. Do you, you would like to please yourself and make Allah subhanahu wa angry. How stupid you are. Like, I don't find words to say, yes. Huh. Likewise, it is not right for a woman to imitate the style of men. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cursed the person who would do such thing. Yes, a curse, you know what's a curse? Mal'oon. La'na in Arab, mal'oon means a curse, okay? He warned us against it with, 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 with dire threats. Dire, you know what's with dire threats? Like that's very serious. Never do it. Mm. It is. It is also rep rep reprehensible to wear any kinds of dress which is also transparent that the body can be seen through. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, you see the girls in the school. Everybody sees them. They wear the skirt or the the skirt, right? And they can't they can't move their legs. <laughs> Subhanallah, and they cover their hair. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, how come you do that? It's haram. How come your mom let you go outside of the house and your dad with that clothes? I don't know. Maybe they changed in the school. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala them to Islam. Amen. Hold on, let's look here. If the private parts aura are visible through it, the wearer is a sinner. He is immoral. He is an immoral person. Immoral person. And do la akhlaq. Akhlaq malih. Immoral person means the akhlaq male. You know akhlaq male? Alif wah male? Akhlaq male? Right? No? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. On one occasion, Asma bint Abu Bakr was visiting her sister Aisha. So Asma and Aisha, they are the daughters of Abu Bakr Sabir. 
the wife of the Prophet وسلم, when he noted that Asma's dress was not thick enough. Ah, Asma, the dress was not thick enough. What did the Prophet وسلم, say? Yeah. He turned his face away and not to look. Okay, he turned his face anger. away and then what? He turned his face away in anger and said, if the woman reaches the age of puberty, no body of hers. No, no part of her body should be seen. Should be seen but this. And he pointed to his face and hands. That's the hour for women. After the age of puberty, you can. Okay. But Alhamdulillah, I see. By the way, before coming to here to America, and uh, I have never uh, like uh, been in Somali community. Wallah azim may Allah reward your parents and grandparents, Jan and your moms. It was my first time to see like kids, three years girls with a complete hijab. Because in Egypt, they just go outside with their hair and like, they're little ones. Here, I, I, I saw this here only in, uh, when I came here, and mashallah, may Allah reward you the best again. That's why I love uh, this community, yeah. from Kenya, Somalia, or whatever it is. Fine. We should clearly keep in mind that the choice of clothing shouldn't, shouldn't first be governed by what one likes best or what, what is least expensive, but by the unchanging principles of modesty. So the principle is the very important, yes. Modesty is one of the most delightful characteristics of a woman. The girl who dresses modestly and tastefully shows her refinement. Immodestly, immodestly in dress cannot be considered elegant. It is mostly vulgar. You know what's vulgar? You know this word? That's not a good word, right? Bad word, yes. Mm. Some requirements in dress according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes. The covering of aura. Aura refers to the parts of the body that should be covered at all times. The covering of aura is also necessary. Is also a necessary condition for the validated, validity. Oh, prayer. Validity. You can't pray. Like, can I pray in shortness? And the shortest when I sit down, they are above my knee. No, you cannot. Okay. But what if I if I have a, a like a top for a man? Okay. And my all my shoulders are no. Your shoulders are not aura. So from the knee till the uh, belly, belly button, for a man, yes. Mm. For both men and women. Okay. Aura for men is defined as the area between the navel and the knees. What's the navel? What? Yes. Under the, under the knees, yes. Huh? For women, the aura is defined as the whole body except for the face and the hands. Hence, men and women should, be fully, should fully cover their aura. Yes. Clothes should be loose enough so as not to reveal what they are covering. The oh, aura. Of course. Mm. They should be thick enough so as not to reveal the color of the skin or the parts. Or so parts if you wear covering. like, yeah, sometimes I find again that they wear like complete sleeve, but the sleeve is not, it shows the skin under it. Haram. You look nice, you are happy with that, <laughs> Allah is not happy with it. I'm not talking about the boys, okay? That's girls, okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Now. A woman should not wear a man's clothes, nor should a man wear a woman's clothes. But listen, one asked me, I think here, what about these jackets? Here, because it's very cold, the girls. It's like any jacket can fit for anybody, man or woman, okay? Mm -hmm. I think we don't wear jackets to, we just, just we feel cold, okay? So that's our intention, okay? So I think for the jacket, I don't intend to imitate a man or a woman, but that's something that's gonna keep me warm, okay? Alas, you see some, some people like, yeah, you see, this is the jacket can work both. You got that? Okay, unless it's a sign for women, yeah. An aspect of such an imitation includes the manners of speaking, walking, dressing, and moving. Ah, like, yeah, speaking in a womanizing way, or a woman way. Like, boys, they speak like a woman. Why do you do that? Be a man, be tough, rough, okay? Don't talk like a, what, CC? Is it the word or sassy? What is the word? Sassy? Is it the word? I don't know. I'm asking you. Really, I don't know. But there is a word, I think, uh, boys, when they talk like women, they call, huh? Sassy. Sassy, sah? Huh? That's haram one. So anybody who does sassy thing, make him stop it. So stop being with that. <laughs> they should not be clothed. They should not be clothed with fame, pride, and... Can you guys... The guys. Why you guys are disrespectful? Let's find this one. Finish this one. They should not be clothes of fame, pride, and vanity. Yes. In addition? In addition to the above conditions, men are not allowed to wear silk and gold. This, however, does not apply to women. Yes, women can apply. SubhanAllah, there are things in the side of man, and there are things in the side of woman. Okay? Yes. Now, questions? Fill in. 
Space is permissible for women, but not for men. Still, Still. Still. right? Still, right. Space and dress cannot be considered elegant. And dress cannot be considered elegant. What's in dress that cannot be considered elegant? Like a transparency, right? If you can see through it, right? Transparency, yes. Right and right with the requirements of dress in Islam to cover your awra, to cover your awda, protect you from heat and from the cold, right? Jazakum Allah khairan. Wallah, this book is a good one and it's so finished the fourth chapter. Jazakum Allah khairan. We need you to read more. Alhamdulillah.